Gary Stevens left there by Walters. Hatley now to Johnston. Walters. Walters getting the ball in. It's Hatley. And Rangers have scored. One of the most pleasant moments of the season was the long awaited comeback of Ian Durant in the reserves. Almost 15,000 supporters turned up at a reserve match to welcome him. I don't think the, the crowd didn't know it was a two o'clock kickoff, so they sort of turned up late. <laughs> I mean, they turned up, they turned up in thousands, and I was really surprised, but I was glad to see the, the way they turned out. Did it give you a boost? It did at that time, because I was, I was starting to get my first breath in the game, made my first game back. And then when I seen the crowds come in, it gave me an extra lift. How much do they mean to you, honestly? Well, I've been a supporter all my life now. I know what it's like, so once you put the play for the Rangers now, the supporters mean so much to you now. That, that an extra goal for you, hopefully last start. In the third round of the Scottish Cup, Rangers drew Dunfermline at home. And Rangers are ahead. Taking on Sharp. Moving in the cross. It's a brilliant finish. In the league in January, Rangers were stretching ahead of Aberdeen and looking at a much stronger position for the home run. Dundee United were being left well behind. Man of the month, Mark Haitley. Any goal by a striker is a good one, I suppose, but late winners have a special significance. On February 9th, Ali McCoyce got into the starting lineup for the first time in 12 games. The selection paid dividends. And he was in the mood the following week against Motherwell. Well, I've been looking for Boyd, but succeeds only in finding Stevens. Here's McCoist. That's a great effort by McCoist. Sheer genius from McCoist. Still looking for the chance to clinch the match. There's Petri. Against Cardiff in the next round of the Scottish Cup, Nisbet's goal was a pick in the 5-0 win. There was a big change now in the look of the league. Anybody looking at that would have imagined the title to be in the bag. Aberdeen with a game in hand, trailing Rangers by eight points. And United were now completely out of it. Man of the month, Chris Woods, who went through the whole of January and almost the entire month of February without conceding a goal. But beware the Ides of March and the penalty of missing vital chances at Petodre. And Hatley was in, she's away. There's Boris Johnston. Couldn't quite get up high enough for that. So disappointed. Connor drops back to take the pass from McLeish. Bet on the far side. Very clumsy challenge by Hoistra again. He has been putting himself about since he came on. There's Irvin. Wasn't quite what it was intended. David Robertson plays it in. There's Hillhouse! Aberdeen on the head! However, Rangers straighten themselves out with a 2 1 win over the Hearts at Ibrox. But in the space of a crucial eight days, they were to lose to Celtic in both the Cup and the League, lose Trevor Stephen for the rest of the season through serious injury, and have three players suspended, Walters, Haitley and Huller. Even Ali McCoist was disciplined for going to Cheltenham. But despite all that, there was still humour in the camp. I get uh, disciplined for going to the races. And uh, I was actually up in the chip shop, my local chip shop, coming home that night. And a wee East Kilbride punter walks out with his fish up on his bottle of Ember and he says, by the way, he says, you were only Rangers player at the races that day. <laughs> <laughs> Good humour, you know. Johnston, he plays onside for so another marvellous save, but here's Gary Stevens. A magnificent strike by Gary Stevens. 60 minutes gone, Gary Stevens gets his fourth goal of the season. March had come in like a lion for Rangers, but was going out like a lamb, for Aberdeen were now too close for comfort. 
but in the two horse race developing, Rangers were still considered favourites. Man of the month, Trevor Stephen, his great goal against Hearts, and the recognition of his vital influence in Rangers when he was playing, notched him the award despite that injury. Ian Duran came back against Hibs. The delight of that was supplemented by his vital contribution. But Rangers were to drop a point. The race was getting tighter. In the following week against St. Johnson, Durant got one of the sweetest rewards of all for the pain he had suffered by leading the way in a handsome victory. There was also great delight for another youngster. John Spencer scoring his first ever league goal. And goals, of course, were getting very important. Peter Hustra scoring the last one. The 16th of April. It was to be Graham Sunnis' last day at Ibrooks. The news had broken suddenly that he was taking the Liverpool job. It took everybody by surprise. Players, directors, supporters and press. Certainly, Rangers supporters had been geared up to expect the manager to stay a little bit longer. It was as sensational a piece of news as that which announced Sunnis' arrival at the stadium five years previously. He had made a lot of headlines, but none more sensational than these. This is a time for everybody at Rangers to pull together and ensure we win this championship. Because the one thing we'll always remember is no man is bigger than Rangers Football Club, whether it be Graham Sunnis, David Murray or anybody who plays here. The most important thing is, as I said already, to win this league um, and deliver for the supporters something that they've supported both Graham and the rest of us on the board so much in the past. To take a few questions, a few Three days later, David Murray sat at the same table with a different announcement. I'm delighted to confirm today that uh, Walter Smith will be the new manager of Rangers Football Club. Walter Smith, lifelong Rangers supporter, had realised the greatest ambition of his life. I've been a supporter of Rangers for a great number of years now, and it's obviously a great honour for me to accept the position and hope that I can take the club to the success that they deserve. <laughs> On that same day, and in keeping with Rangers' buoyant commercial image, Ian Skelly announced a major new car sponsorship worth £4 million. And then to Walter Smith's first game as Rangers manager. He'd started out in the stand, but as the minutes ticked away with the score still nothing each, he had to get a closer look. Good, Hullock. Good play by Teddy Hullock. He has Gary Stevens on the right. There's Robertson. Yes, he scored, Rangers! It's a brilliant finish by the youngster. Then in midweek, the vital Dundee United game at Ibrooks. This Hatley again coming across for the throw at the near post. Headed away there by Clark, nailed the header and the breakthrough at last. Every manager needs a powerful man at his elbow. Rangers chose one of the most respected coaches in the business, Archie Knox, plucked from a very productive partnership with Alec Ferguson. But just how long did it take him to make up his mind to go to Ibrooks? That was more or less uh, instant. Whenever I spoke to Walter and I knew what his plans were for the club and the club uh, has been for the last four or five years and wh how they're looking ahead to the thing, then it was too big a challenge to turn down. But it was now getting too close for Rangers' comfort. From an almost unassailable lead only a few weeks before, the gap had been whittled down to two solitary points. Not much of a leeway, and putting the strain on everyone. It certainly didn't show on the nerve of Ian Gerrard, delighting the capacity Ibrooks crowd against St. Johnson when he scored his first goal since returning to the first team. He's able to tell her she's Off the field, Rangers continued with a commercial drive. The Rangers Roadshow, hosted by John Gregg, has attracted supporters all around the country. In the Falkirk Town Hall, for example, a huge crowd of 1,000 turned up to hear about the new bond issues and what they meant. The second last game of the season at Fir Park, with not a ticket to spare. Aberdeen at home to St. Johnson, the supporters there had their eyes on the game and ears on the trannies. Oh, great save by Maxwell. Spackman shot, taking out his wicket deflection. Good keeper, bring it into the near post. Driven forward! John Philippon! 
Rangers with the corner. The downward header, Mo Johnston's in there. What another marvellous save by Alistair Maxwell. Well, Rangers just. Walters with the corner. This bit off the bar. Headed away by Griffin. Robertson shot right into the hands of the goalkeeper. Smackman. Ball in looking for Johnson. He gets the touch on. Down goes. Housed by the referee awarding the penalty kick against Maxwell. Oh, and he's missed it. Well, when you lose, I think when you're uh, at that stage of a championship and uh, it probably filters through to players on the pitch that Aberdeen were winning and you're a goal down and we'd missed a penalty kick and uh, making one or two <coughs> tactical changes in the team and you get players caught out of position, you lose a couple of goals in the last four minutes. So that was that was a bit tough to, to handle. 2 nothing down, they were still in the driving seat until this happened. Stretched, it's Arlett again, Chris Woods committing himself, and he scores! It's 3-0 to Motherwell. For almost the entire season, Rangers had led the field. Now, one game left, they'd been deposed. There could hardly have been such a challenge to the club in the league before. A title most people thought was in the bag months ago looked about to slip away, as Aberdeen needed only one point to take the flag. The last time a Scottish Championship had been decided on the last day was in 1965 when Hearts played Kilmarnock at Tancastle and the visitors took both points in the title, so anything was possible. That's why Ibrooks could have been sold out four times over for this match. The most eagerly awaited moment in Scottish football for a very long time has arrived. The biggest showdown perhaps in league history. With the two top sides clashing. Remember, a draw would give the title to Aberdeen. Now Spackman on the break for Rangers. Switching play to the left for Cameron. He's brought down by Van de Ven and he will also be booked. Well, it's... So here's John Brown with the free kick. Ryan Grant lets that run for Van de Ven. This is McKimmy. Good play from Aberdeen. Now right. He's pushing a ball too far ahead, allowing Cowan to make that tackle. He's a very good defender, Tom Cowan. That's why he's been preferred on the side to Chris Vinicom, I think. Vinicom perhaps having the edge in the attacking sense, but this Hillhouse to Jess. Hillhouse again, well tackled by Cowan. It breaks for Van de Ven. The alley cross finds Connor on the left. Back for Jim Betts. Trying the shot on the half volley. Couldn't quite get there as early as he would have liked to take it on the full volley and keep the shot down. But it was a fine move from Aberdeen. There's Robertson. Here to be caught there by Johnston, yes. The heels were caught by Morris Johnston. Well, the pitch has been very heavily watered for this afternoon's match and it certainly has done the trick because conditions on the foot are excellent all the players playing in their normal studs and that's a rare treat at this stage in the season Rangers with the advantage of the wind in the first half up goes Jess, here's Robertson well tackled by Nisbet how's Spackman McKimmy reacting quickly there's a chance for Van de Ven going through and it's Woods on the penalty spot for the save. And having assessed the pattern of play, Walter Smith has decided that Tom Cowan should be withdrawn and Ian Durant should replace him. Cowan injured, unable to continue. He was taken off the field a few minutes ago. That's McKimmy, playing the ball to the far side, trying to get it beyond John Brown. Here's Stephen Wright. The option provided by Van de Ven on the outside. There's Hillhouse! And the best chance of the match so far falls to Hans Hillhouse. It was just a fragment.